Six cylinders are great in Hondas. They should have never dropped the six cylinder in the Accord, right? I think it may even break that two second barrier to 60. They're not gonna be polluting. They're gonna be collecting dust. They're gonna collect dust in garages. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we gotta to talk about Ferrari. We'll talk about the F80 Ferrari with the V6 that everybody is so excited about. Nobody wanted the V12, you know, that's bad for the environment, pollution, loud, noisy, doesn't sound good. Nobody wants that. Props to Ferrari for making the right decision. How old were you when you discovered Ferrari? How old were you? And what Ferrari was the first Ferrari you remember? For me, it was the Testarossa, Miami Vice. And of course, the F40 poster wasn't far away from that. But the one I really fell in love with, the Ferrari that I really fell in love with, was a Ferrari F355. Gated shifter, naturally aspirated, flat plane crank V8, 3.5 liters, 375 horsepower. Amazing car. Mid 90s, when I got my driver's license, that was the dream. That was the absolute dream. And in my mid 40s, it still is a dream. The maintenance is, if the maintenance wasn't so crazy, who knows, maybe I'd even already have one. Anyway, not to get into that. Ferrari made incredible machines that sounded like nothing else, that performed exceptionally well, that were very luxurious and impossible to get. Racing heritage has always been huge for Ferrari, as everybody knows. They always pull from their motorsports, their engineering from their motorsports, and that trickles down to the road cars, their supercars, their halo cars. You look at the F80 and everyone's upset because it's a six cylinder, it's a turbo V6, making crazy power, by the way, insane power. I mean, we're talking over 900 horsepower. And look, I don't want the car to fail, man. I want it to do well. I want there to be something about that car Maybe the performance is going to do something that the other cars aren't doing, that the McLaren won't be able to do, the W1, which right now seems to be the better car. I've always been more of a Ferrari fan than McLaren, but if I had to pick between those two, impossible to get cars. I'll probably never be in that situation where I get to choose between those two, but if I was, Right now, I'm going W1. Look, I'm driving a V6 right now, and my other car is a V6 too. I like six-cylinder engines, but for a $3 million car, a $5 million car, whatever the hell these things cost now, if you can get one, no, you want the V12, man. You, you want something really special and unique. And yes, that will be a very special six-cylinder Ferrari. Six-cylinders are great in Hondas. They should have never dropped the six-cylinder in the Accord, right? They're great in Hondas. They're great in entry-level economy sports cars, but not for $5 million halo hypercars and supercars. You know, I think Ferrari just really lost it here, man. I think, they, I think Ferrari dropped the ball here. But this started a while ago. This started when they started focusing less and less on what the enthusiasts want. This has been going on for a while. And yes, they've had a lot of push from the climate Nazis. They've had a big push to go electric, to go hybrid and then go electric. And let's face it, nobody wants a fully electric Ferrari. That six cylinder sounds really exciting now compared to a fully electric Ferrari. I mean, the tech is just not there yet with electric cars to make them soulful, exciting, exhilarating, visceral. Back to the F80, how did we get here? Well, we have to go back to when they dropped the gated manual. When the Ferrari 430 was out, they're really pushing the F1 gearbox. Nothing wrong with the F1 gearbox. And I'm not saying they shouldn't make F1 cars, dual clutch cars, like that was great. And brought a lot of incredible technology to us. But they shouldn't abandon the things that their consumer base wants. And now you have people that aren't car enthusiasts driving Ferraris. And this has been going on for 15 years or so because they're easier to drive than ever. Automatic transmissions, power everything, computer controlled everything, nannies. They've made a lot of money doing so. They're very successful. I'm not saying Ferrari hasn't been very successful, but they've gotten too far away. And I think it's really, I think they've really hit a point here. We're going to see how the F80 does. The LaFerrari, which is the F70, you had that naturally aspirated V12. The Enzo, you had the naturally aspirated V12. The F50, NAV12. F40 twin turbo V8, 288 GTO twin turbo V8. So we will see. I do think that the performance on this car is going to be nuts. I think it may even break that two second barrier to 60. Ferrari is always conservative with their numbers. And if they're claiming 2.1, hey, 1.9 is possible. And I would love to see that. 
that'll help the car a lot if the performance is really out of this world. It's really gonna have to do some amazing things. But maybe this will be the blow that tells Ferrari, look, you need to bring back the gated shifter. We haven't had a gated shifter since the California, and they only made like, what, three gated Californias? The 430 was really the last one that was gated that was attainable at the time. 599 gateds are extremely rare. So it's been a long time, it's been over a decade, dropping the naturally aspirated V8 with the Speciale back in 2016. It's been a while, it's been almost a decade since we've had a naturally aspirated V8 Ferrari. And nothing sounded like the naturally aspirated V8 Ferraris, man. Yes, they had to go turbo and nothing wrong with going turbo. But be more like Porsche, Ferrari. Ferrari, you need to be more like Porsche. Porsche still has NA cars. Porsche still makes manual cars. They have given the enthusiasts what they want. And that's why these days, I'm much more of a Porsche fan than I am a Ferrari fan. Even though I grew up, Ferrari was the car in the beginning. It was all about Ferrari. But Porsche has just done the right things and they're bulletproof and don't get me started. I could yap about Porsche forever. I love Porsche. But Ferrari needs to go back to making cool cars again, man. They don't have to be the fastest. Lots of us still want that experience. We want a gated manual transmission. It's one of the greatest things to ever be put in a car that should still be an available option on a Ferrari. Even if it's slow, who cares? Give me a 13 second Ferrari that does 175 miles an hour. Give me that, man. A lot of people will want that. Come on. Let's go, Ferrari. Make those cars again. Bring back naturally aspirated V8. And don't abandon your glorious V12, one of the most incredible engineering feats in automotive history. It sounds like nothing else. It's beautiful. It's sexy. It's, it's a full body buzz. It's an eargasm and an orgasm all in one. There's nothing like it, man. Nothing like those engines. We don't need more electric hypercars and sports cars, especially when they're not going to be polluting. They're going to be collecting dust. They're going to collect dust in garages. They'll be like 0 0.0000000000001 of the pollution of supercars. What are your thoughts? Am I in the wrong here? I mean, I know that many of you are agreeing with me because I've seen it on social media. I've seen it on YouTube and a lot of people are upset. If you're excited for this car, please comment. Let me know because I'm sure there is some enthusiasm. I'm sick of hating on other cars just because they don't live up to what I want them to live up to. But at the same time, I think it needs to be said. This is what we want as car enthusiasts. All of us, we all have a voice now. So get out there, get on social media, talk about it, tweet about it, make your videos. Let these car companies know that we don't want everything to be fully electric. It's okay to make electric supercars and hypercars. It's okay to make six cylinder turbo cars, absolutely. But don't abandon your roots. Don't abandon what makes you, you. You buy an automatic watch, you buy it for what it is and what it can do, the quality and the craftsmanship and everything that comes along with it. Just because this can tell time better doesn't mean that it's a better watch, right? What's your favorite naturally aspirated Ferrari? And what is your favorite Ferrari out of the big six? Right now, for me, it's a toss up between the La Ferrari. I love the La Ferrari, man. And I didn't like the way it looked when it came out. And that's something that people forget. A lot of these cars, when they came out, people didn't like the looks. People thought the F50 looked weird. People thought the Enzo looked weird. People thought the La Ferrari looked weird. So I have a feeling that this car is gonna look better in the future. I think the F80 will look better maybe in black or a darker color. We will see. People are calling it the ugliest Ferrari since the Mondial and the, the 412 and some of those Ferraris that came out in the, in the early 80s. I don't know, I have to see it in person. Things aren't looking so good for the sound, unfortunately. It looks like the sound clips so far have been pretty mediocre to say the best since we're used to the best sounding cars in the world coming from Ferrari. Literally the best sounding cars. It's not all Ferrari's fault. I know they've had a lot of pressure from big government, from climate change people. They've had a lot of pressure about polluting the environment and all this nonsense. It's not nonsense, but you know what I mean. It's, it's gotten out of hand. I want a clean earth, absolutely. It's like the cure can't be worse than the disease. I mean, ultimately we would have to move away from civilization. I, I just don't know how it can be done. And that's, I don't want to get into that. I'm not an expert here, guys, but we've gone too far with this stuff. We should have V12 hypercars to lust over. 
We should have V8, naturally aspirated cars. We should have manual gated Ferraris. It's not all about the speed, man. Look, there's still some really fast stick shift cars out there. 911 GT3 is still very fast, incredibly fast around a track. Maybe not in a straight line, but still, I mean, it can run high 10s. That's with the PDK transmission. It can run low 11s with the manual gearbox. And that's fast, man. If anyone that's driven a low 11 second car, it may not be groundbreaking in today's world, but it's still fast. And it's fast enough to have fun. So come on, Ferrari, make those cars. Make those cars, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.